so either we can in tomorrow's lecture we can continue to discuss more about optimizer or i would i could pick up uh, a problem for data dictionary data dictionary is where all the metadata for uh, rdbms is stored okay that is a very important aspect that you want to be exposed to so we have two ways either that becomes a uh, exercise later on next week that you guys try to solve a problem on uh, data dictionary because that is one thing you should use that is as a programmer something you have to be aware of if a client says my query is running slow okay that is what explain plan utilities and uh, data dictionary utilities you'll use so does anybody have a feeling one way or the other that one is we can continue to do chapter 14 because it will follow in the sequence of text it will make reading much easier for you guys so you'll know what this text can offer you later on or we could go for an exercise tomorrow so is 14 just more query optimization it is more into is the beginning of query optimization yeah that is that is the thing and i don't know why he broke it up into two chapters and uh, it is it at certain point it becomes redundant because all you are doing is okay let us change the plan in this way and do the cost okay so instead of having a lecture on it you would rather have an exercise on it you know there is no point in again me drawing one plan and say okay it will have 10 reads here 15 reads here and that is what i feel i just find it redundant please give me your feedback because i want tomorrow's lecture to be used well query optimization in the sense of what the dbms does to your queries when it gets them or is this in the sense of us writing better queries okay one is to understand what dm dbms does is so when the query hits a dbms it is going to look at all the different possible plans okay for the same query that you have written it is going to have 15 different plans of execution it may do a projection before it and so today's lecture is reasonable it is short but it is good because it still exposes you how what are the other things that rdbms uses to may say move the projection up or low conceptually you know it that yes do a projection before you do a join and so that is when i feel because you guys have written the queries in a month before and we have gotten the queries ideas introduced already you know how to calculate costs of queries you know how algorithms are are written up so i want to use tomorrow's day better so if you can if you have any feeling one way or the other it's fine other way if we don't do the data dictionary tomorrow it's <coughs> not going to be Excuse covered me. huh if we don't do the data dictionary tomorrow it's not going to be part of it no i want it to be covered okay. i i really want it to be covered i'll i wrote this problem set on data dictionary for uh evaluating programmers at ad itself okay and we made them do you might have heard of one of our pro are you recording already oops okay ah <laughs> 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 okay thank you <laughs> that helps <That's> 20 dollars <laughs> 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 no it's it's a very good exercise that makes you think more about how to write good reports because if if you go into somebody else's database that you have designed somebody else has designed and you go in you want to find out where are all the constraints that this guy defined you can't keep on going into uh, every table and looking at what is the definition of the schema and that is where the metadata becomes really important you can go in and query this either so there are prefixes that there are like user dba and all so these are different tables that are in the uh data dictionary or metadata for your database is you can say uh something like select uh constraint name from from should be here 
from all i think it is constraints so all constraints these are i'll give you the exact because every dbms has its own uh names of the tables that go into metadata which will store its constraints then there are user constraints dba constraints depending on these are classified on the scope who can see what and uh, from all constraints where user is equal to joe or something like this so then you know that okay i took over the project from this guy i want to see all the constraints that he defined so you can get a table name also here and constraint name also so you know what is going on so data dictionary gives you a very powerful view of the complete table space and so i will i will certainly if if we don't discuss it i would hand out at least the problem so you guys can read over it because it has very good links to refer and uh, understand data dictionary more but that is again on oracle because we are doing it on oracle so it it might become like a useful handout for you guys later on so i'll i'll pass that out irrespective and some you told me yesterday wednesday is a bad day because a lot of people are leaving for i have no idea a lot of people <laughs> are just saying some people won't be okay no i just want to get a idea about how many won't be here i have no, i don't i don't know you don't know okay problem <laughs> <laughs> i i just want to know so we can we should pick up a topic for the day that people who are not here can do it by themselves also if that handout is i don't that is how i want to use that day that is why i'm asking if i can get a good feel of how many people will be here i don't i mean okay i've been able to tell me but i've only heard from four people so okay if you could, can can somebody please find out for me yeah yeah i'll okay. i'll let you know okay okay <laughs> <laughs> okay okay let's let's look at a few examples today <laughs> okay so and we can make that when if 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 everybody agrees we can make wednesday as the day when we'll we can talk about data dictionary in detail and i'll i'll pass out the handout to people who won't be here in advance so you can just look it over find the relevant links and maybe take out print outs to look at it is there a silver somewhere for the rest of the rusty has it i thought he might have given you guys out i really want to discuss i can tell you so when on monday i want to make sure we go over normal normal forms that is one big piece that is missing till now mm-hmm. after that we can i had thought of giving an overview of transactions how transactions there are several things that are quite important when you go into uh, into secure or i should say atomic transactions and something i wanted to cover after that then a lot of transaction stuff for what's worth yeah we have you have had have seen yeah you've had a yeah, lot of transactions a lot of it in systems it doesn't mean it, it might okay. it might be going over that the then okay another no so then i this is good you're telling me because i i'm not aware of it the other important thing is then we can look at um suppose you're working on a database and suddenly you can't find any handles what do you do okay thinking about where the locks are happening so i can go into like inside dba uh, like database also we could pick up some examples if you guys want yeah. if you haven't done that part that you have your system is being used by 20 concurrent users and suddenly you lose people are not able to get database handles <clears throat> who's the user who's hogging hogging all the resources there could be these kinds of small things we could discuss that if you want to is that better than yeah yeah because after normal forms i don't want to do any more theory there is enough enough definitions have gone in now i think we can is that reasonable then i'll try to over the weekend i'll pick up some we have a quiz on sunday everybody knows that mm-hmm. right okay uh i'll try to pick up uh some examples for you guys i'll some i'll try to pick up from what we have encountered at ad like people have put in as knowledge objects 
for internal use, but I'll expose them as a tutorial because they are good. People have encountered small things, how to find deadlocks, how to how to look into your database performance. Any so. luck with the big tables comparing queries for optimization projects? Yeah, yeah. I we are getting that. Uh, I got the document yesterday. I have to now reformat it so we can use it. Okay, we, I got the document, and that is most probably going to be your final exam exercise that you will get. At AD, it took us about six, six hours to finish that off. But in that, we had to write uh, Perl scripts to scrub the data of a million rows and uh, include that. So you won't have to do any of that because you'll be inserting your own data into those tables and gen generating those reports. Uh, I still told Shai that you should still get two full days. One is because you have enough time to go over the reference material and understand what you're doing. That's all. There's no point in database we'll be using to do this and whether we've used it before. Oracle is is everybody okay with Oracle? We're okay with it, but none of us have used yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is when you will get two full days. You know, I'll give you relevant documents to look at how to. Um, how to use commands like explain plan. So you give it a query, and then it tells you actually what plan it is going to use, how many times it will, what indexes it thinks are appropriate. And then you make, if you if you create an index on your table, then again, if you execute the query, it is going to start. Suddenly now, the metadata has registered an index on that table. And it may use it for the way you have written the query. And That'll be like Thursday and Friday next week or something? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Two days would be enough, and you'll you'll learn a lot. That is what I feel that it'll converge a lot of things for a database course. Okay. All this, all this discussion we have been having about performance may start making sense then. Then you'll see the numbers that yes, it did hit the disk so many times. It had to go and change things. Okay. Okay. What are the jobs of a query optimizer? Find an evaluation plan. And calculate costs. Okay, so we have, in a sense, we have understood how to do all three of them for different queries over the last one week that we have been looking at and using different examples. So I will use the examples that uh, that book takes because it gives you two ways of evaluating queries. So the query that is there is again select So in relational algebra, I will write it. I should just draw the tree. We don't need to write it in relational algebra.
Okay. So now if we, so once we have defined an algebraic representation, the next part that a query optimizer has to do is tell it how it is going to do these steps. Okay, so there are, there are two ways to do it. One is pipeline evaluation of operators, of the operations, and uh, materialized. So, for instance, if if we have a lift, this is our operator here, and it is going up, and then we have something right here, okay? If the result of this operation is, is written in a temporary space, then it is called materialized. If it is not written, and all you do is you fetch the results here, suppose here also, let us just give an example that there's another op prime here. And so this operator did something, and all these results, either we can write these results into a temporary space, say T1. So there's another relation that was written up. Okay, then it will be called materialized. So there'll, there'll be an extra cost associated with it. Okay, because you'll have to write to the disk. And then again, you'll have to read it to use it. Okay, if you feed it directly to this, as you get this, so this node, whenever this node requests data, this passes on that data, it gets processed, whether it is going to be written or rejected, except or reject. Once this processing is completed, then it requests the next one. That is called on the fly or pipeline evaluation. Okay, and in this you do a writing. So if you conceptually think of in what, why would anything use this against this? is every operator has its algorithm in the way it is going to work, okay? Every operator has an algorithm of implementation. If that algorithm needs to access this data multiple times, then you want it to be materialized, okay? So depending on what kind of algorithm this query optimizer is going to decide for your operator to use is when it'll have to decide whether I should go into temporary relation or not. Okay? Okay. okay. So you will see whenever this is written is, okay, you don't need to save this, so this will be represented as on the fly then this is comparison, this is going to be scan, okay? There's a file scan associated with this, okay? Then because this is a comparison, you don't need to, is it going to be sorted here? So this is not going to be written up because it is comparison, so it'll be on the fly. Okay, so and then there'll be whatever, whether it is simple, nested loops, or whichever, whatever is the implementation algorithm for join that is being used is going to be implemented here. So this then becomes a representation of what query optimizer eventually decides that, okay, now I have decided how each of these are going to be implemented. Okay? Why why would join be materialized? No, I don't think it's, it's it should be. It's like no, it is an implementation. The, what algorithm you're going to use for this? Okay, but it's, it's, I'm just not sure why. So it's on the fly too? Or? Yeah, so you, what you should do is, what you should do is when this join is being made is when you start pushing it up. So this operator then has to request the results of this join. 
exactly till till it comes into here because that is when your results get written up okay so so the join is also on the fly yeah not yeah okay. in this case yes i mean depending on whether how you implement it this because you can the other way to think of it is which i'll go in next is you might want to move these down here so before you do the join you actually do your your uh, selection okay so you have much smaller data set so these things are what query optimizer is going to look at and uh, okay but for each of these then it has to think whether it needs to the algorithm that is going to implement the next operation does it need to go over the data again and again if it needs to go over the data again and again then it is going to materialize it okay but in, in the case where we've got extremely large data set where um, you know, the joins can can produce more pages than our buffer space is available we're going to be forced to materialize it <coughs> Mm, no because it depends on how you'll process you can process tuple by tuple you can process page by page it is your choice so you don't have to you are not you are not pulling up everything in the same area okay so you could so this operator could actually say okay now give me the next page i'll process the page okay okay so depending on how i'll go again that is why i'm saying these are all options that dbms uh decides how to do it depending on all the parameters that it has okay. actually the question that you asked there is an example for it which is very good it just answers that specific question you'll see in the book when you'll read it because it actually compares the cost of going a processing tuple by tuple to page by page okay depending on what the implementation of this operator that is requesting asks for okay okay now let's get into it is called iterator interface because you have to go over either number of pages or number of tuples whatever is going to decide where you are in the so you start processing say this one and you requested the first page here something has to keep track of where you are here and which what is the corresponding page here that you are working with okay so all those these counts that are or i should say tracking that is done is done through operation through the functions that are provided by the iterator interface so you have functions which are open then you have get next and close so open is going to initialize initialize it has to allocate buffer memory then get next is going to go for a loop and keep track of place and this is going to deallocate the space that is associated with this okay so these are the functions so what what an iterator interface gives is a set of functions through which you can access these things and it just hides the implementation of everything okay and this is again not at a user level thing because this is what is happening is at much lower level of implementation of this you will never call get next or uh, iterator interface okay okay so regarding the optimizer r will decide what i'll do is then tomorrow why don't i pick up 
parts of chapter 14 which I feel may not be overlapping with what we have done. If it can go into specific things that are being used by DBMSs today that have evolved over time, then I'll... The problem is... Don't mention PostgreSQL or anything like that any, anywhere. So my my question so is how... Uh, because you guys have used Postgres, uh, how is query optimization, uh, how good it is? Well, we've never you might have read or have you, no, <laughs> certainly, <laughs> I'm just wondering, have you, this would be interesting, if we, if we get that exercise in a shape that we can, and I think I will be able to get it, that some people should do it on Postgres, mm -hmm. that would be very nice. <laughs> just to see, you know, really, just to see that it will become an internal thing to compare for us. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Then the important part is system catalog. That is what is called data dictionary in Oracle. And this stores all the metadata about your data. Okay? So, for example, you can pick up all the... So, there is a table space. So, let me go ahead. So, you have, say, select owner from all tables where user is equal to Joe. Okay, so you can actually start looking into and finding out that what all different tables, indices, constraints he has ever defined, and you could start working on some some of these. Okay, so we'll, we'll go over this as an exercise in detail, and I'll have this for you guys. But system catalog is very important, and I, I don't know in which they would he doesn't, does he mention any other name for it? Maybe every every database has its own name of, of calling it. Do you know what is in Postgres, what is it called? The metadata? Okay. Try to look into the documentation. That would be useful if you are thinking for a project on, on Postgres. Okay. Same way there is a table called all constraints. And you can get all the constraints defined by this. And, and you can either give it the table name here. Instead of owner, you could just say table name. So you can at least whatever is your project that you're working with, you can start getting more information about. OK. OK. Let's do one more example. None of the companies will ever release what their optimizer does. Never. Because that is the heart. That is the heart of the, the whole thing. And I think this author had no other choice. It's probably this was the only uh, optimizer that was the first one. So the first one is always open. And then they didn't realize the importance of it. And <laughs> it's like the system R thing, which is from the 70s. Yeah, and that is the only one that is available for you to look at. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know how good are they. How the authors have. I think. So, the question of that you asked about, uh, and where I alluded to pushing the selections above and below. And that is what is called, I, there are two types of, of selections you can do. One is by pushing the selections. So another way of, this is, I'm taking this from an example that, that has in book. So it has two parts that you can improve, improve performance by pushing, pushing selections. And second part is by using indexes. And I'll have uh, Dimitri take care of the indexes because it is, I'm trying to find another problem for him to discuss this during recitation. But let's look at 
pushing the selection. So pushing the selection would mean because this boat ID and ratings, they are specific to these tables or relations, we can move them down. Okay? And so what is going to happen is if we just use the nested loop joins, so where I should rewrite the query from. Does anybody have a book? I'll just rewrite, I'll draw the query again. I'll just make it simpler. So we have the selection. Oops. <laughs> Check what is green. What is green? The single green in the book. Something good. Group by, I guess, and having clause. Very interesting. So, do you read the red ones again and again till they become green, or? <laughs> Gradient, yeah. Are those stolen office supplies? She's a partner. So you're not really stealing. Oh, Okay. So let us write the assumptions. Join by sort merge algorithm. And we are using a number five buffer pages. Pages to estimate the cost. Estimate and even distribution. Distribution of boat reservation and ratings are ratings vary from one to ten. So these will be our assumptions for for doing this evaluation. R had 1,000 pages, right? R had 1,000 pages with 40 bytes, right? That That is how it became. Uh, and 100 tuples on each page. Is that, or yeah, do right. I have it wrong? It's, it's is it? 50 bytes. Uh -huh, so then it is 50, 550, and 80 here. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> so first we'll do a scan. So our cost for the scan would be 1,000 plus 500, okay, because we are doing a simple scan. Next would be, so we are going to do a selection. And in selection, 
So we have 1,000 pages, and in 1,000 pages, we have even distribution. Uh, so there are 100 boards. 100 boards, and so we will have how many? 10, ten pages then, right? So 10 pages per board. So we are going to cost for writing, say, temporary relation here, T1, what happened? It's just a funky boat club. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So once we have written that down, on the other side, it is going to be, because our ratings are evenly distributed, right? So the ratings would be, we'll have to scan, we'll have to write uh, 250 pages, right? Because if we have a scale of 1 to 10, half of them maybe will be below 5 and half would be above 5. So we'll be writing for T2 here, 250 pages. Ronnie, did you know that a number of students have actually joined a boat club? So practically understand. <laughs> 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 uh, if, if we can actually have a AD Uni sale, <laughs> then we can. They join the community voting. Unfortunately, it doesn't work though because they don't take reservations for boats. <laughs> <laughs> It was all for naught, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 so okay. So now we have the the sorting cost. Then again, we'll have that two times and. Right. And so how many buffer pages we have? So five. No, buffer pages are five. Yeah. So five buffer pages. So our two times n is going to be for this 10 and log b minus 1 would be 4. n1 is going to be 2. So n1 equal to, for this case, n1 equal to 10 over 5. That is equal to 2. So this becomes 1. So we get log 4, 2 plus 1. That is equal to 1. So we get 40 page. How many buffers did we say we've got? Five. Okay. Okay. So let's do the... So we'll have sorting cost of 5 for the first one. Sorry, 40 for the first one. And for the second one, then we are going to have uh, 250 pages, right? Pages, so N1 equal to 50. Yeah, and log 450 is going to be 1664, so 3, right? Mm -hmm. And so our sorting cost is going to be 2 times 250 times 3 plus 1 equal to 4. That is equal to 2,000. You just estimated that 250. No, because we, uh, so our ratings are between 1 to 10. Right. And we oh, want to select less than 5 or greater than 5, so it will be half of the pages would, on an average, fall into okay. that category. So I just divided that by 2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because 
past zero world. Thousand and then merging PT one. What is T one? Ten plus two fifty. So what is the total that we get? Six two sixty two sixty is five twenty, and this is fifteen hundred thirty five hundred. And is it okay? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no! What's the tens? Four eighty. No, I think oh, the okay. tens are added. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. So this is the cost when we project our. Uh, operators i'll just do one more which is if we were using instead of sort merge if we were using the block nested loop shy covered all these algorithms right yes right all of them or rusty also shy didn't cover in the sorting i think he should have he should have started off there probably and costing was done in rusty is doing Yeah. Oh, okay. Join method. Okay. 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 So for block nested, we out of five, we basically are left with three because two we have to reserve for input and output. So we have three buffer pages effectively. And out of this. Then, because we had t1 equal to 10, right? t1 equal to 10, mm -hmm. so we will be able to cover it in four times, four sets of three. We will be able to cover our t1 groupings, and that will correspond to as many reads of our t2. So our cost should be then 10 plus 4 times 250. Because T2 is 50, 250, and so this is the as many times we'll have to do it. Sorting and right. Oh, uh, that's a plus. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> so this is uh, reading the 10 pages, and this is the grouping of 4 times 2. Okay. So. one last point is using the same thing by index and dimitri will cover it in the lecture so tomorrow what i'll do is i'll try to pick up what all uh,